Welcome back to Dylan Pickup's blog. Today we're going to talk about magnets and their role in the pickup and what strength has to do with it and all that. So stay tuned. Alright, so if we're going to talk about the role of magnets in guitar pickups, uh, we're going to go all the way back to school for a second. You remember this? This uh, experiment when we were kids and you would take a wire and wrap it around a nail or a screw and then hook up electricity to it and that coil would make the screw or the nail into a magnet and it would cause whatever you put the magnet next to to move. We're basically doing the exact reverse of that. Instead of using electricity to cause motion with a magnet, we're using motion to go through a magnet already existing and causing electricity. So we're going to talk real briefly about how that works. Basically, <clears throat> anytime you have any kind of inductance, it induces motion. That's what, that's what it does. And basically what it does is if we have these electrons and they're in a wire and they're just hanging out, then we go ahead and we add magnetism to them and they are here's a magnet so uh, let's just say we have doesn't matter really but let's just say we have north over there south over there there's a magnet and here's a wire with electrons sitting there if that wire is within the influence of that magnet then all of a sudden those electrons are going to start running back and forth they're going to go this way, then they're going to go this way. They just, they just get excited and start going back and forth. And that results in alternating current, AC electricity, which is what we make with our pickups and we send to our amplifier. It's that simple. We talked about that before in our How to Pickups Work uh, blog post. But we want to get into the magnet itself and how that really affects that. So when we use we're going to use that wire basically you could do this, you could make a pickup, a pickup would work with a single wire, the problem is, is that it wouldn't move so if we put a magnet here and we used one single wire uh, the electrons are probably moving back and forth in that, or they are moving back and forth in that wire if the magnet is strong enough. So we go ahead and we put thousands of wires next to it and we multiply that. But here's the deal with this. The magnet, so the, the question, the, one of the big questions is, how does magnet strength affect our pickup tone and how does it, you know, how does it affect it? So uh, well, if we look at a single coil pickup pole, and we're just going to, and I'll, I'll actually have some some pretty cool pictures in the written part of this blog, uh, but we make this magnetic bloom around this pole, okay? So here's this pole. Um, it's not exactly shaped like that. It's got maybe a little bit in on the ends, kind of, something like this. <clears throat> Let's say this is and we'll talk about this for figuring out what the difference is. So we've got A2, 3, A4, A5, and then usually a C8. And if you're familiar with guitar terms, we know that that stands for El Nico. So that is a, an alloy that is the magnet that is most commonly used. So we have an El Nico uh, magnet, and then we have a ceramic magnet. And the two, three, four, and five are the strengths from the weakest to the strongest. The most commonly used uh, are A2 pickups, Alnico 2 pickups, Alnico 3 pickups, and Alnico 5. Alnico 5 is probably the one you see most a lot. And then in modern stuff, and A3s are usually, you see those a lot in um, older vintage stuff. The ceramic 8 pickups, you see a lot of times in a super high output pickups that are used for like heavy metal and stuff. So let's talk about why this changes how our pickup sounds. Basically the deal is this. Here is our 
magnetic field around our pickup. If we place the string uh, just outside of it and we move it, not very much of this magnetic field is going to be disturbed causing our electrons to run back and forth. If we put it closer within it, then all of a sudden when that magnetic field is disturbed, it moves. The electrons, the electrons move in relation to how much the magnetic field moves and you have AC voltage. But here's the interesting thing, the stronger the magnet, the harder it will push on those electrons. So basically, if it's a weak, if that string is there and it is a weaker one like this A2 or this A3, then when it pushes it, uh, when you push that string and it pushes the magnetic field and the magnetic field causes the electrons to be excited, they just don't get very excited. So they move a little bit and they don't move as much as a, a 5 or a ceramic magnet. So basically the, there, is, there is, for lack of a better term, there is some inertia involved when this magnetic field moves the electrons. It will actually push it and there will actually be, and we know that for lack of a better term, the push, the force behind electricity is current. So there will be a, a higher current. There will also be a higher voltage because the increments in which those, those electrons move back and forth. So let's say this is an Alnico 3 pickup. They might move uh, when that magnet, when that string gets struck, they might move back and forth this much. But with an Alnico 5 or an Alnico I'll take a five pickup, maybe they move back and forth this much with much more force. When they move back and forth this much, then it becomes from this much AC voltage to this much AC voltage. And then in a ceramic eight pickup, maybe they move back and forth this much. And then all of a sudden we have a big jump in our AC voltage. More output. This is why not just the size of the coil, uh, the resistance of the coil, that DC resistance, you know, that 8K, 9K, 10K, 12K that we talked about the other day. That's why not just that number factors into our pickup output. Because how much we can excite the electrons in that coil, no matter what size it is, will definitely affect the output of the pickup because it affects how much AC voltage we can make, okay? Um, or how hard we can push on that AC voltage is really the most, most accurate way to say that. If we can only push a little bit, the output's not gonna be as much as if we can push a lot. Now, we also did say that if you only had one wire in your coil, that it wouldn't be amplified very much, so you have to have more wires. So the bigger the coil, the more output also that is also another factor and we're going to do another blog post that is going to discuss coil shape and coil size and how many winds and why that affects the output from that side but we want to talk briefly about specifically magnets so does this mean that just because you have a 10k pickup that it is the same result that is the same output obviously because of what we're seeing here no so just to kind of put it in a, in a nutshell, a weaker magnet is not going to have as much force on those electrons. They're not going to move very much and your AC voltage is going to be smaller. A3 is going to be a little bit more and it's going to be a little bit bigger. On and on and on, A5 is a very common one. So it'll be like this and it'll probably be a little bit bigger and then an, a ceramic 8 is going to be even more so that is it magnets are super easy and uh, hopefully this will this will help kind of just make it easier this it's an easy visual representation to realize what that magnet is doing if you have any questions if you want to add to this or anything definitely let us know and we will uh, add the question to our blog as we go along. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. 
found some value in it, and we will see you tomorrow.